guys, we're going to be baking this baton. Ooh. And this is this is didn't turn into a wood turning channel. I just have nothing else to do, so I made this with a very grippable handle. And I also got a new shop apron just to store some things in it. So yeah. So here I'm just going to measure just a little more than two feet and then I'm going to cut it. So here I'm going to be taking a chisel with bevel side down to take controlled cuts and just remove the corners. And next I use a spoke shave to just remove more material and smoothen out the corner. So right now I will just loosen the puppet. Next, I will just put some oil. And I will also put some oil on the lid itself. Once I got the correct length, I'm just gonna pound the wedge in tightly. Right here, I'm just gonna put this part on the center and then crank it down. You don't need to crank it down too tight, just enough that it doesn't wobble side to side or up to down. Once you got the fit you want and it spins freely, then just get wrench or some pliers and tighten the nut at the other side. After that, remove it again. And then this time, since you're happy with the placement already, you can spin it once and twice because once is usually not strong enough to really spin it. And then put it in once again. And then tighten it down again. I like to set up my tool rest about 1 8 to 1 4th inch away from my workpiece just so that, you know, there's less tear out and the chisels, it won't force the chisels down. And you see here, I really switched to bungee cord for the meantime and it works pretty well. So... Right here, I'm just going to start with the uh, roughing out. And here, I made it pretty evident that you need to only cut when you're doing push. Because when you let go of that pedal, it goes up. It won't really cut. It will just... Well, I'm not sure if it's really true, but it dulls your tool out. As you can see here, it's already fairly rounded. 
And so, we're about to move on to our next step. So here, take your skew chisel, in this case, my flat bench chisel. And just start removing all the ridges from the roughing gouge and just smoothen everything up. Then let's adjust our tool rest so that we can rough out the other half. And again, I'm using dry wood for this project. So yeah, it's a little slow but Still possible because using green wood on these types of lathes green wood is just like wood that hasn't dried up yet it works really easily it dulls the tools less and it just works much better So here, it kept slipping so I decided to, as you can see, wrap it up one more time. So here, just take away the first one eighth to one fourth inch of material that's why it's better to cut it a little bit bigger than two feet just like that because if you don't there's gonna be a hole because you know you've attached it using those center points finally know what it's called So here, use your hand to mark the handle. So right now, I'm just gonna use calipers to get the thickness that I want. So here, I'm just gonna make some chisel marks there just to serve as a reminder to not go over that. Next, just start removing material with a roughing gouge. Here, I even things out with a flat chisel. Here, 
Here, I'm just eyeballing my design with a pencil. And here, I'm just rounding over the end. As you can see here, I'm just putting my beads and laying out my design. So here, I'm just making a chisel mark there. I'm checking with my calipers to get a thickness of 1 4th inch. Then I'm just gonna remove some material there and then round, ov round over that part. So here I'm just adding a slight taper to the baton. So right now, I'm just gonna take my puppet and move it back just a little bit. Not really that little, just maybe 3 or 4 inches. I mean, no, 2 to 3 inches, 3 to 4 inches is too much. And here, I'm just flipping it over. And the head of the baton will be here with the screw, the threaded rod. Here, I'm just loosening it because I tightened it earlier. It's hard to crank. And the reason we do this is so that we have room to like round over the head of the baton. So just do that, tighten it down, and start shaping. Here, just get the shavings and the dust from the ground and use that to burnish the wood. And the last step is I'm just going to put some antique wax because it gives the wood a darker color. I hope you enjoyed today's video guys. Bye!